Today, on Lessons with Miss D, we're going to learn about simple machines. So this is a simple machine called a lever. And a lever has two pieces. It has something that is flat and hard, and it has something that it's resting on called a fulcrum. And simple machines help us do work easier. So I'll show you. Right now, my fulcrum is right in the middle. And I'm going to put my little guy on one side of my lever. And I'm going to put blocks on the other side. And we're going to see how many blocks it takes until my little guy can go up. So I've put on two, three. So it took three for my little guy to go up. And I'll show you again. One, two, three. Three. Takes three of them for it to go up. Now, I can change how much work it takes to lift this little guy by changing where my fulcrum is, which is why it's a machine. As a machine is anything that helps us do work. So I'm going to take my fulcrum, which is my marker, and I'm going to put it on one side. And I'm put it over here. So now I moved my fulcrum over to the side. So it was right in the middle at six inches, and now it's over at the side on four inches. And I'm put my little guy on the side and see how many blocks it takes to make him go up. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven. <laughs> it took seven to make him go up just because I moved my fulcrum. Now I'm going to move it towards where my little guy's going to be. So now I'm going to put it on the eight. Last time I put it on the four, in the middle it was in the six. Okay, and then this time. My little guy is going to be on this side. Okay? So here he is. He is on this side of it. And now I have this long part that's up. And let's see. If I put one block on it. Oh, that's all it takes. Just one block. So again, I put him on. All I have to do is put one block and he goes up. Because this lever or simple machine does the work by Putting the fulcrum down towards what I want to lift, it takes much more, less work to make it go up than if I put the fulcrum all the way at the other end. If I put him down here and the fulcrum away from him, it takes a lot more work to do it. So people can move really heavy objects with less work by taking a lever or something that's flat and putting a fulcrum down by the area by what they want to lift up. Look, it almost does it all by itself. So all I have to do is use a little bit of work or a little bit of force and my guy goes up. So now I want you to look at some vocabulary. We have the word work. It's what is done when a force changes an object's motion. Simple machines, a machine with few or no moving parts. Load, the object being moved by the machine. Wheel and axle, a simple machine made of a wheel stuck to a rod. Inclined plane, a simple machine with a flat slanted surface that is raised at one end and a compound machine two or more simple machines put together. So those are our words for this lesson on simple machines. So read them yourself and go over them. And make sure you understand them. So now while we are doing this lesson, I want you to have out your being a scientist notebook. And I want you to turn to page 41, which is lesson three, simple machines. And as you do it, I want you to be working on this. So the first one, we're going to watch this movie, work in simple machines. 
and I want you to draw an example of work that was done in the video. So let's watch it and see if you can find one. What is work? Work can be easy, or hard, or fun. We use simple machines, like hammers, to build things, create meals, and entertain people. It takes work to fly us to faraway places. Work can move the earth, and be good for the earth. In what ways will you work today? So after watching that, I want you to be on page 41 and draw an example of a kind of work that you saw in the video. You can pause the video and do that and then start it again. Now I want you to look at work and machines. So we're going to read page 236 in the science handbook. I want you to answer the following questions after we've finished reading. What is work? And then we're going to try and label if these things are work or not. Then what does a machine do and what does a machine not do? Okay, so let's look. So now you should be able to read it. I will read it to you. But remember, you can always sign into McGraw-Hill, which is the MGH on your student applications page when you go onto Microsoft Edge, and you can find your science handbook there. So we're going to start with simple machines and work and machines. That's the type. That's what we are going to read. It says, in science, the word work has a special meaning. Work is done when a force moves an object or changes an object's motions. For example, picking up a book is work. A force changes the book's motion. Pushing on a wall is not work. No matter how hard you push, the wall does not move. So remember, in order for it to be work, an object has to move. A machine is a tool that makes work easier. Machines do not change the amount of work done. They just change the way you do the work. For example, it's easier to move a heavy rock by rolling it in a wheelbarrow than it is to lift and carry the rock with your hands. The wheelbarrow is a machine. Some machines help you use less force to do work. Other machines change the direction in which you push or pull. So a backhoe makes moving dirt easier. And a bottle opener is a machine that makes it easy to pry bottle caps off bottles. And it says, not all machines are made of many parts and have a motor. Some are simple tools made of just one part. So I want you to look at that again. So you can pause the video and you can read that again. And then I want you to answer the questions two and three. Three, so what is work? Try each action listed on the table. Is it work? So I want you to pick up a book. Are you changing the book's movement, their motion? Are they moving? Think about a problem. Slide a chair, press feet against the floor, and push against a wall, okay? And then what does a machine do? What does a machine not do? So I want you to answer those questions in your notebook, and then you can start the video again, and we're gonna read types of simple machines. Types of simple machines. Simple machines are machines with few or no moving parts. There are six types of simple machines. They are the lever, the pulley, the wheel and axle, the inclined plane, the screw, and the wedge. So now let's look at the different machines. So a lever, a bottle opener, and a seesaw are both levers. A lever is a straight bar that moves on a fixed point. The fixed point is the fulcrum. A lever can be used to lift something. The object lifted is called the load. In the diagram below, the girl is the load. When the boy presses down on one end of the lever, the load on the other end is lifted. The closer the fulcrum is to the load, the less force you need to lift the load. A crowbar is an example of a lever. Levers can make it easier for people to lift or pry objects. They can change how much force you need to move something. They can also change the direction of the force you use. 
pressing down on a lever lifts up the load. So this is exactly what I showed you with the lever I made. This, uh, the fulcrum is a fixed point, and then we have our straight bar right here, and that's exactly like my ruler, and this is like my marker, and we learned that if I put my fulcrum closer to whatever I want to lift up or my load, then the amount I have to press down on the other end is less. Remember, when I moved that marker towards my little guy, I only had to use one block in order to lift it. Whereas when the fulcrum was in the middle, I needed three blocks. And when the fulcrum was close to the force over here, I needed seven. Our next thing is a pulley. A simple machine that uses a rope and a wheel to lift an object is a pulley. The rope is looped around the wheel and tied to the object you want to lift. When you pull down on one end of the rope, the other end rises. Like a lever, a pulley changes the direction of a force. With both a pulley and a lever, a force is applied to one end, makes the other end move in the opposite direction. The wheel and pulley acts like a fulcrum of a lever. A pulley makes work easier. Lifting a heavy object directly can be very difficult. Using a pulley lets you use your body weight to help you pull the object if the wheel is placed above you. The pulley also lets you lift an object higher than you can reach. So pulleys are a wheel with a rope. And what it is, is you pull on one side and the other side goes up. And it makes it so it's much easier. And also makes it so that as long as your wheel is above you, you can pull something higher than you are. The next simple machine is a wheel and axle. Another special kind of lever is a wheel and axle. It's made up of a wheel that moves around a post. The post is called an axle. Doorknobs and Ferris wheels are wheels and axles. A wheel and axle can make work easier to do. Turning a doorknob is easy. Turning the thin bar behind the knob, however, is hard. The doorknob is a wheel and the thin bar is the axle. Turning a wheel requires less force than turning an axle. So on this doorknob, trying to turn that would be very hard, but trying to turn this is easy. Trying to, if I wanted to stand and try and turn right at this bar, I wouldn't be able to do it. But I can turn this big wheel and it's much easier. Inclined plane. A simple machine with a flat slanted surface is an inclined plane. Inclined planes can make work easier to do. They reduce the force you need to move an object. Think about moving a heavy box onto a truck. You could not lift it off the ground to put it in the truck. You could slide it up an inclined plane instead. Sliding a box up an inclined plane requires less force than lifting the box straight up. So you want to think of ramps as inclined planes. And just like it's much easier for someone in a wheelchair to roll up a ramp or an inclined plane than to try and get upstairs, lift themselves upstairs and upstairs and upstairs. That wouldn't work very well. The next one is a screw. An inclined plane wrapped into a spiral is a screw. It takes less force to turn a screw than to pound a nail. A screw changes the turning force into a force that pulls the screw into a material. So you think of a screw basically like um, anything that has those round ridges that kind of spiral down. And what it is, is it makes it so that when you turn it, it goes into the material and makes it so it's much easier to put in and usually more secure. Simple machines wedge. If you put two inclined planes back to back, you get a wedge. A wedge is a simple machine that pushes objects apart. It changes the direction of a force. For example, a wedge changes a downward force to a sideward force. The head of an ax is a wedge. The axe changes the downward force of the swing into a sideways force. The sideways force pushes or splits the wood apart. Most cutting tools, such as knives, are wedges. As you press a knife into the food, the knife pushes the food apart into two pieces. So a wedge, you're pushing the knife down, but the food isn't going down. The food is going sideways. It's going apart. So that's what a wedge does. So now... I want you to go back to your pages. And this is the part I want you to do. 
I want you to do number six, which is to draw each of the six simple machines. Remember, you can go back and rewind the video and look at what the simple machines are, or you can go on to your McGraw-Hill app, which is MGH, on your student apps and read in your science handbook the six different kinds of simple machines. And I want you to draw them in your boxes. And then as the last thing, I want you to select one of these. And I want you to tell how it makes work easier. So in your science notebook, you're doing one to seven on pages 41, 42, and 43. And that will help you to really understand what is a simple machine. And I have a challenge for you. I will link this website in the description of the video. And it's six projects for learning about simple machines. And I want you to see if you could make one of these simple machines at home. You could make a pulley, which is lots of fun. You just make it with a string and a little cup and a doorknob. You can make a marble run out of an inclined plane. You can make a lever using a binder clip or a marker and a piece of tape and a ruler just like I did. Or I like this one, the wheel and axle recycled cars. They just use little, um, you could even use bottle caps and a toilet paper tube and a stick. And it would be the exact same thing. I want you to see if you can make one of these machines and then send me a picture or a video of it. And I think that would be really cool. So that is it for simple machines. Remember, I want to see what simple machine you make at home. Yeah.